Well, what's going on, everybody? Pastor Jamal, Rising Ground Church by way of Let Me Talk Radio. What's going on, everybody? Everybody was good. Had to sneak out in the garage, man, to get this done. Seems like um, me and my wife are always. We wind up posting something at the same time, usually on our uh, Rising Ground Church YouTube page. Um, We both had something uh, the Lord was putting on our heart. Um, And I think mine came a little after a while, but it was uh, I think is really pertinent. I think we're all we are all either entering our promised land. We have landed on our in our promised land or we are headed to our promised land. And this means so much for um, the the things that God is doing in the church um, big time, because it's not about you entering into your promised land just for yourself. It's about you entering and getting in there because you have to become a catalyst for some somebody else reaching theirs because it's all you know it's all meaningful it's all beneficial for all of us together for the world individually all of that good stuff so uh we have to get there but there are some things that that's going to have to happen on your way there when you first enter there or when you're getting in there um the word that my uh that, that the lord had given, had given my wife was about release so it's something that has to be released um, that you have to do. So it's going to actually position you better. OK, I mean, let me let me rattle my paper here. So in Deuteronomy, you remember in uh, Deuteronomy, it talks about when the children were, you know, when they enter their promised land, these are the things that they're supposed to do. God, God has given them some conditions. He has given them some mandates, some things that um, they have to do in order to not only get there, but when they're when they're there to keep up the promised or the promises to keep up the blessings or the breakthroughs or the victories. There are things that we have to do. Now, some of the things are in there or specifically for the culture of the Jews, which, you know, really doesn't um, not specifically talking about us that are not Jews, but um, they are all serious. But a few a few things are meant for everybody. And I think when we when it talks about the tithing and giving and offerings and these kind of things, these are meant for the culture of heaven, the culture, the people of heaven. Um, When it talks about. Well, well, the the meat of it is, is just obeying God, being obedient to the voice of God. We have come to a point in the walk, in our walk, in our existence here on the planet where things are shifted, they're shifting and they have shifted and it's requiring, it's going to require and it has required us to be plugged into God like never before. Now, you would think that you were always plugged into God in which you are. But for some reason, we always give certain things over to God and certain things we don't. Um, for, uh, for probably a lot of different reasons, but we have to get in the, in the mindset. We have to get in the position that God is requiring you to totally lean and depend on him for everything. You have to consult God on everything and you have to get used to that and that muscle and that thing, because this is where, this is what it's like to all the conditions that God put on the children of Israel in their promised land, it it sums up to that. You have to allow God to do all of the work, all of the leading, all of the guiding, all of the things because of this specific season. So the contract of God or God's agreement for your promised land is a legal agreement. It's a legal document. It's a legal law. And and it keeps the enemy from having legal access to your rights as a citizen of God. So when you talk about the example of the sim or the symbolism of the um, all of the th- the commandments and the things that God put on the children of Israel as they are entering in their promised land as and as you know the first stages of being there. These conditions or these requirements were very important because 
and I hope this is not too loud. I'm trying to look at this uh, WAV file and see if it's too loud. I'm going to turn it down just a bit, y'all. Bear with me here. Okay, boom, boom, boom. Okay, anyway, so um, it's a it's a it's a it's a legal agreement that again it keeps the enemy from having rights to you. Now that's a weird that's a weird thing to say. How can the enemy have rights to anything, especially to you and you and you and you, if you are a child of God? Well, the the the, the simple answer is because God is all powerful and because God is just, even with the enemy. God is just so because there's no other power but God. So God has these systems in place that um, they work when you lean and depend and you do what God tells you. The kingdom of heaven is a culture that is set up according to the mandates of God. Now, we don't have to over over spiritualize this or make this so hard or unfair that you know you start stressing you start sweating it's just simply doing what God says God wants to protect you God wants to uh, keep you and he wants to thrive you but it's only done by way of his methods his methods so the example of that of the children of Israel and all of these things were just simply God saying you know do what I tell you to do and you're going to and you're going to thrive and you're going to prosper. And I love how, you know, it talks about if if they if they do what God says, they're not going to have to build anything like, you know, how you build um, aqueducts and water systems. And, you, you know, you just get the land ready for life. You know, your promised land is all that's already provided. There are things that you are not going to have to do. But if you do not listen to God in all matters and in all ways, then you're not going to have access to that life. And um, it's it says that you're going to I mean, it's a, it's a such it's such a plush life. And I'm not saying that really like a kind of like egoically or 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 or, or like a materialistically kind of I'm not saying it that way, but I'm saying by God's definition. It's the life you want to be in and the life you want to have if you do it the way that God says it has to be done, specifically because if you don't, then the enemy has rights to c come in and invade and and he can destroy you. That's the simple truth, because, you know, when we talk about sinning or, or just, you know, you do things and if you don't repent from them, if you don't turn from them. And the enemy just comes along and says, you're just like Job. You know what I mean? Even Job. But he thought, well, let's see, this is this. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, I'll, I'll continue what I was saying. Even Job. And he says, well, you have a hedge of protection around Job. And God says, OK, um, um, you can do anything to him, but you can't kill him. Now, one thing about Job that, that nobody. Well, I'm sure they, they talk about it now. But Job had a had a level of pride that that allowed God. Or how, how do you say that? That made it OK for, for God to kind of budge on his hedge of protection, because technically and legally, because of that pride, the enemy had access. The accuser had access to enter Job's life and, and, and run amok. So it's the little things that we hold in that we keep when when we don't keep a heart of repentance and and our eyes on God. And it's not really it's not really as hard as it sounds. I think we, we have this image, at least me. I have an image of the children of Israel and the Old Testament and all of these little things that it seemed like they had to do to please God. And some of it seemed like, oh, you know, it's like, man, I can't do this. But no, it's simply obeying God and allowing yourself to because God will tell you when you're wrong. God will tell you when you're in and when you out of order or when you're heading out of order. And he'll tell you what you need to, to do to come against that by the blood of Christ, you know, and by just, the, you know, just the guidance of the Holy Spirit. And that's really cool because, it, like I said, it doesn't take a lot. But anyway. The promises. Are only effective, effective and effective and accessible in our promised land.
So again, everything that we've been waiting on, everything that we feel God has been leading us to believe and to um, get ready for is all accessible in your promised land. So, so what am, what am I, what am I saying? We've prayed and we've prayed and we've waited. We've waited, we've prayed and we've waited for things. Sometimes it feels like God is just playing games with us. It's like, it's a revolving door. You know, you think you get a breakthrough and all of a sudden God says, oh, here's something else that you have to do. All of these things mean it only means that you haven't made it to your promised land yet. But God wants you to get a track record of being obedient, getting used to the voice, leading and depending on God for all things. You, you tithe and you offer, you give all of these things that, that, that happen outside of your promised land is just to get you conditioned, that muscle strengthened. So when you get there, uh, you'll already know what to do and you'll already be used to knowing what, you know, actually what, what to do. So that's so important because, again, we get so burdened down with time. But we don't know the actual time when God has placed us where he's placing us for us to thrive for not only us and our families and our communities and our uh, cities and our nations, but our but but the world. You know, we don't know that specific time until it's getting down to it. And um, sometimes, man, it seems like some people are in their promised land when they come out the womb. <laughs> and maybe that's so for some people, but it doesn't matter. There's a there's an appointed time that God has for you to enter into this thing and to access continually those promises by way of your obedience, by way of your obedience. You know, the table that is prepared is prepared for your promised land. We always talk about these tables you know, God has prepared a table before you in the presence of your enemies. The enemy is always uh, around. But nonetheless, all of the fatted food and the feasts and all of the things that are awaiting you are awaiting you in your promised land. Because truly, if we're supposed to thrive in the land that God has promised us for the benefit of the kingdom, for the expansion of the kingdom, for the benefit of, of the world and our communities and our families, man, then that's a that's a huge responsibility that we carry and that we have of as being good stewards over even communing and connecting continuously with God. We talk about this all the time. Divine flow. Divine flow, again, is an unbroken stream. It's a current. It's an unbroken thing that that rides you successfully and in, into your thriving place, into your promised land, into the places that God has meant for you to blossom and bloom not only for your benefit, but for, for the benefit of everybody around you. I hope this is making sense because it, it's, it's critical to understand and it's critical to get. And I think it helps us even to let go of some of the strain, again, that we have when we're not there yet. But nonetheless, we, we still have to pray. We still have to be these people because we're building these muscles that um, are going to be really beneficial to us when we enter that land. But we are at a time where. God is literally he's thrusting people into their promised lands. He, he's he needs you to get there quickly. He's made it so it's not so long now because of where we are in time. But it's going to still require you to clean your hands. It's going to still require you to release some things, to repent of some things. You ask God, what is it that I need to repent of? Show me what it is, because some sometimes you can repent in a moment. And God is telling you to and you don't know exactly all the things that you need to be repentant of or, or repent from. And, but, but you do something and God allows that thing to to kind of uh, 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 leverage you into another point. But then that point, it's it's like now he can't do that anymore. So now you've moved a little further. So now it's requiring you to be a little more mature. So that's singling out some things that you need to be repentant. That, that you need to repent from. So it's very crucial. It's very crucial that as you enter your promised land, as you're going in there and as you're headed there, that you realize that God is trying to clean you up because when you get there and when you, when, when you've released what you need to release, when you've cleaned what you have need, when, what you need to clean, then, and when you are allowing yourself to be connected the way that 
um, God is trying to get you just like that promised land or just like, you know, the children of Israel and Deuteronomy. When you when you like that, then everything you touch is going to turn to gold. That's what that means to everything that you put your hands to is, is, is going to work. That's only accessible in the promised land. Again, you can we're, we, when we're outside of the promised land, we're building ourselves to be prepared and be ready because God, God don't want to just give you nothing and just and then let, let you just lose it. So he, he works you towards being this specific thing. So when you when you get there and when you're there, you have those tools, you have those muscles. And now you can whatever you touch is going to work. And that's Bible, son <laughs> and daughters. <laughs> anyway, I'm just man, I'm just joking. No, I'm not. But, but hey, get it. Get yourself ready because we have to be in our places of promise now. Now we have to be there now because everything that we have to be. And I said this in another video. I don't, I don't think y'all heard it. But um, as we were in the wilderness, God provided the manna. So God gave us the manna then when we enter into our place now we become the the givers of the manna for those that are behind us so you are to be aids and you are to be catalysts for people who are are climbing the mountain they're climbing the rough side of the mountain for a reason and you have to be who you are but you can't be it if you're still holding on to the past you if you're still holding on to things that God is trying to get you away from because you cannot take the, 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 the old into the new. I mean, that's just that's just it. So I hope it made sense, everybody. Um, let me talk radio. Pastor Jamal, um, uh, I love y'all and, and and pray about it. But, but pray as far as don't pray about seeing if this is the right word or not, because it is the right word. You pray about how God is to direct you and what you have to do to get you ready for where you're going. I'll talk to you. Love you, Kathy. Bye-bye.